Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today we're gonna to look at six pulley problems. Uh, these problems come up in AP Physics, uh, undergraduate physics. Uh, so here are the six problems, have a look at them. There's kind of a variety of problems. Uh, the key to all these problems and to all these pulley problems is the approximation we're gonna make is that the mass of the pulley is negligible compared to the mass of the blocks. Uh, the other thing, we also neglect the mass or the weight of the rope, right? We assume that it's kind of a small, thin rope. All right, in all the problems, I'm going to calculate what the acceleration is, and I'm also going to calculate what the tension is. Uh, again, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you don't like it, ah, just don't do anything. And <laughs> consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments sections. I'll get back to you. All right, let's get started. All right, here's problem one. This is kind of a standard problem. Uh, we have a block of big M that's connected to another one of little m as shown here. We're going to neglect any friction here between this surface and the block. So that simplifies the problem a lot. And they say, what is the acceleration of the system? All right, so you imagine you set this up and you let it go. You release it from rest. Well, if you were going to guess, I would probably guess that if there is no friction, this one here is probably going to accelerate that way. And this other block here is probably going to accelerate that way. So if there's an acceleration to the right for this uh, big block, that means there has to be a net force. That's Newton's second law. And also, if there's an acceleration down of the little block, little m, that means there has to be a net force acting down. All right, so let's do, since we're talking about forces, what we have to do now is do a free body diagram. So this one here has a weight. I'm going to call that mg. This one here also has a weight. It's different than that one. It's in the same direction, but the magnitude should be little mg because the mass is little m. Later on, we'll take these numbers over here. We'll take 10 kilograms for the big block and one kilogram uh, for the small block. All right, let's look at some other forces acting on these blocks. Well, if you have a look over here, this is resting on a surface, so the table is pushing up, and we're going to call this force the normal force. No normal force over here. This block is simply suspended by a rope. Now, since it's suspended by a rope, look at there's a contact point here. Wherever there is a rope, we're going to have a tension force. And there's a tension force acting on the small block in the up direction. It's always in the direction of the rope. All right, if you look at now where that rope is connected, that rope is connected all the way on this side here of the block. And again, there is going to be a tension force acting on this block. Since we are neglecting the mass of the pulley over here, the tension is actually going to be uniform everywhere in this rope. And that's a really important point. And that's it. Now we have all of the forces acting on the entire system. We take a guess of what the acceleration of the system is going to be. So now what we're going to do is we're going to write down uh, Newton's second law for both blocks. There's two blocks. We've got to write it two times. Now you could look at the forces in the vertical direction for this block. That really doesn't tell you much. You're simply going to end up that the weight and the normal force simply cancel out and there is no acceleration up and down. Right? So at the end of the day, this equation simply tells you that the normal force equals to the weight of the big block. Anyway, that is one equation and that allows you to solve for the normal force. What we're really interested in though is the acceleration of the system. So let's go ahead now and look at the big block M. We're going to write down Newton's second law, and we're also going to write it down for the small block M. For the big block, it's pretty simple. Have a look. There's only one force here acting to the right. So that case is super easy. It's simply T. And that has to be equal to mass times acceleration, except keep in mind we're talking about the big block. So you need big M here and the acceleration. For the little block, I'm going to choose down to be positive because that's the direction of the acceleration. So I want to be consistent when I kind of pick my directions over here. And I know since the acceleration is down that the weight here should be bigger than the tension. So I'm going to write it like this. The weight's acting down. I'm going to call that my positive direction minus the tension is acting up. And that there has to be equal to mass times acceleration. This here is the net force acting on the little block. And that equal mass times acceleration. Now, one thing you see I've done when I've written down these equations here is I've written the same acceleration for both blocks. And that's because we're assuming that the distance between the blocks here will remain constant as they accelerate. So they're not going to get closer together or farther apart. All right, the last part over here, the simplest way to solve these, again, if I'm just looking to solve for the acceleration, there's actually two unknowns over here. There's acceleration and there's tension. 
And that's typically what they're going to want me to solve for in this problem. Now, the simplest you can do now is if you notice this first equation, we have positive t. In the second equation here, we have negative t. If I add equations one and two over here, let's call this equation one, equation two, if I simply do one plus two, you see what's gonna happen? This tension's going to cancel with that one because this one's positive and that one's negative. And what you're left with here is mg. And on this side here, what you're gonna be left with now, I have to add up both terms because I'm adding up both equations. Here, if I factor out an acceleration because it's the same for both, and I'll just rearrange the order here. All right, we get an expression here where we've eliminated the tension. So at the end, what you can do is simply write down the acceleration. You divide through by this term here in the bracket is the total mass of the system. That's the total inertia of the system. And that ends up going in the denominator. Okay, if you go ahead now and substitute numbers, if little m is equal to one, well, this is simply little g, and the denominator now is simply adding up the total mass, right? The total mass gives me 11. Uh, at the end, if you punch that in the calculator, you should get around 0.89, and that's in meters per second squared. Now, if you were looking for what is the tension, well, the tension, you can use any equation. You can either use equation one or equation two. Equation two, you have to do a little bit more algebra, but it's still not that complicated. I'm gonna use equation one, because right away, I can get the tension. It's simply going to be 10 times the acceleration, which is 0 0.89, therefore we get 8.9 newtons uh, as the tension. All right, so that's how you solve this problem. Pretty straightforward, let's go on to problem two. All right, this is a similar problem to the other one. However, in this case, both masses are kind of hanging directly and are gonna move up and down. So we're gonna proceed using the same thing. We're gonna first do a free body diagram on each mass. Uh, the left one here, the big M, there is a weight acting down and the little m has a weight acting down and it's a different magnitude, right? It's little m times g. Now in this problem, it's a little bit simpler actually. Since it's connected to one rope that goes above and around this pulley, it's connected right here. It means there is a tension force pulling on that block. Now again, we're neglecting the weight of the pulley Therefore, that tension is uniform everywhere, and that means there's going to be a tension pulling up on the little block M, and that tension, the magnitude is the same. Actually, in this case, the direction is also the same. Now, if you were gonna guess, if I release the system from rest, what do you think would happen? Well, if this one here is 10 kilograms and this one's one, I would probably guess that this one here would accelerate down, it would move down, and the little M would probably accelerate up. So this is important. This is what I'm going to choose to be the positive direction for each mass. Notice they are different and that's okay. This is kind of my coordinate system now for each mass. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna write down Newton's second law for the big block and for the little block and then we're gonna solve for acceleration and tension just like we did in the previous case. So let's start with the big block. Well, if you think about it now that since it's going to accelerate down, it means that the weight is bigger than the tension because there has to be a net force in the direction of acceleration. So we have to have something like this, mg minus the tension. That are, those are all the forces acting on the big block, and that has to be equal to mass of the big block multiplied by the acceleration of the big block. Newton's second law. How about the little block m? Here we have tension acting up and the weight acting down, and we know the net force and the acceleration are acting up. So the way you write down Newton's second law for the little block is like this. T is now positive minus mg, and that has to be equal to ma. All right, what we're gonna do now is, again, I wanna solve for the acceleration. I have two unknowns. My unknowns are acceleration and tension. At this point, you have a system of equations and you can solve them using any method you want. What I like to do, however, I like to notice that this T and this T have opposite signs. And that means if I add both equations, just like I previously did, I know those tensions are gonna cancel out. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm left with now, if I add up equations one and two, I'm left with the weight of the big block. I'm left with the weight of the little block, and that has a different sign. And over here on the right-hand side of the equal sign, again, I'm left with a similar term to what I had in the previous problem, which is the total mass 
multiplied by the acceleration. All right, on the left-hand side, I could factor out a little g, and then I can divide through by the total mass of the system to get an expression for the acceleration. So it ends up looking like this. I factored out the little g, and now I divide by the total mass of the system. And this is the expression I get for the acceleration for what we call, this is, we call this an Atwood machine. All right, so this is what we have. Let's check this result, and this is choice C, as you can see from uh, the different variations. Does this result make sense physically? Well, we can do a check. Let's do a check, and the check I'm going to do is, what do you think happens if the big block has the same mass as the little block? If I set this up and they have the same mass, you'd expect that they would just stay there. If I release them from rest, the acceleration should be zero. And actually, that's exactly what you're going to get from this expression. You can see if the blocks have the same mass, those terms in the numerator are going to cancel out. And then that's it. All right, so let's go ahead now and substitute our numbers. All right, we have... Uh, the masses of the blocks over here. So the acceleration now is simply going to be 10 minus 1. Uh, 10 minus 1 uh, gives me 9. Multiplied by little g. And again, divided by the total mass of the system, which, get, which is 11. Um, so now you get something that's much bigger. In this case, you get something that's around 8 uh, meters per second squared. So there's the answer for the acceleration. The next thing I wanted to solve for is what is the tension in this problem? Now again, the tension appears in two places, in equation one and equation two. You can use any of these equations to solve for the tension. I'm gonna use equation two. And what I do is I simply bring the weight on the other side of the equal sign. And again, I'm gonna factor out the little m since it's the same. And this becomes pretty simple. The little m is one. So this, the tension simply becomes one multiplied by the acceleration that we just solved for eight plus the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8. Uh, at the end, this gives me 17.8 newtons. Just substituting the values in there. All right, so there's problem two. Let's go on to problem three. All right, here's problem three. Again, we've got a similar setup, except now we've got one of the blocks that's on a slope. But we're going to proceed using the exact same method as before. So first of all, there's a weight. Let's go ahead and draw all the forces acting on it. We're going to have a weight here, and the weight is mg. There's a weight acting on this block. The earth is pulling down on both blocks. This one here is little mg. All right, this one is connected to a string, therefore there has to be a tension acting up, T. And again, if we're neglecting the mass of the pulley, the tension is uniform everywhere, and that tension, or that rope is connected to that block, so there has to be a force of tension T acting along the rope. Uh, there's one more force, since the block is on a slope, there's also a force from the slope acting on the block, and this we're going to call a normal force. Now, if you were going to guess, if you were going to release this system from rest, what you would probably guess, if this one here is 10 kilograms and this one's 1 kilogram, I would probably guess that it probably would accelerate down the slope. And this one over here would probably accelerate in the up direction. So I'm going to call down the slope positive. This will be my positive direction. And I'm going to call this my positive direction. And that's really going to be the direction of the acceleration. For the block on a slope, you can also define, since we have forces in two directions, I'm going to call this the positive y direction. And I'm going to call that down direction the positive x direction. Okay, so now what we have to do now is, this is my coordinate system for the block on a slope. What you have to do now is you have to break down your forces so that they only have components in the x and the y direction. The normal I don't have to worry about, it's only along that vertical direction. And the tension force is also along the direction of the ramp, so I don't have anything to do with that one. What I really want to do now is I want to break the weight down into two components. So there's going to be a component of the weight that is acting perpendicular to the ramp. Now, if this is the angle theta, the angle that the ramp makes with respect to the horizontal, you have to do a little bit of work to convince yourself that this is also the angle theta. And if that's the case, and this is mg, that means this is the adjacent side, so you should have mg cos of the angle theta for this component, and you should have a component down the ramp should be mg sine of the angle theta. 
All right, we're now ready to write down Newton's uh, first and second law for the big block and for the second block. Uh, for the big block, again, there's no acceleration perpendicular to the ramp. So right away, you should be able to write that the normal force minus this component of the weight, mg cos theta, should be equal to zero. And that right away tells you that the normal force equals to mg cos theta. All right, so we can find the normal force. That's not very exciting for this problem. We really want to find what the acceleration is for this problem. So what we're going to do here is we're going to focus on the other direction, the direction along the ramp for the big block and the direction up and down for the small block. And we're going to write down Newton's second law for each of those. All right, we've picked the down direction to be positive for the big block. And I've chosen up to be the positive direction for the small block. So let's go ahead and sum all the forces. So we've got this component of the weight. This is acting down. So I'm going to write this as mg sine of the angle theta. And I have the tension acting up minus t. Those are all the forces. This is the net force acting on the big block. That has to be equal to mass times acceleration. How about the little block? Well, now I've got tension acting up. That's my positive direction minus the weight, which is acting down, there's the net force. That has to be equal to little mass times acceleration. All right, again, we're going to call this equation one, equation two. Guess what I want to do now? If I'm looking to solve for the acceleration, I'm going to use the same old trick as what I did previously. Notice that here you have negative t. Here you have positive t. If I add up equations one and two, guess what's going to happen to those? They're going to cancel each other. So I'm going to add up equations one and two. The other way you could do it is you can just isolate T and then substitute it into the other equation. That's just going to take you a few extra steps, but you're going to get to the same answer. All right, if I add up both equations, I'm still going to have this component of the weight. That's mg sine of theta. The tensions will cancel out, but I'm still left with this weight of the small block. And then if you notice, the right-hand side always kind of looks the same, right? It's the total mass multiplied by the acceleration. Okay, so now all you have to do is divide through by the total mass, and you can get an expression for acceleration. So let me go ahead and just kind of do that over here. All right, so the last equation I get for acceleration, I always divide through by the total mass. To simplify the numerator a little bit, Notice that I have little g in two terms. So you can just factor that out. And here you're left with m sine of theta minus little m. And again, you're looking for an acceleration. So you should have little g there. All right, that is the expression now. What we're going to do is substitute our numbers. What we have as big block is 10 kilograms. Little block is 1. And we know what little g is. So at the end, you're simply left with this. Uh, we have 10. This is sine of the angle 30, uh, minus 1. All of this gets multiplied by little g, which is 9.8, and divided by the total mass of the system, which is going to be 1 plus 10, which gives me 11. So at the end, uh, if you go ahead and substitute in all the numbers, uh, which you should get, sine of 30 is 1 half, so this actually becomes 4g divided by 11. Put that in the calculator, you should get around 3.6 uh, meters per second squared. Now the next question is, how do you find the tension? Well, you have to go back to either equation 1 or equation 2. I like equation 2, it's pretty simple. I just have to bring the weight on the other side. So the expression you get for the tension, you can factor out that little mass, and you're left with A, the acceleration of the system, plus the acceleration due to gravity. Since little mass is 1, this becomes pretty simple, right? It's simply 3.6 plus 9.8, and all of that multiplied by 1 kilogram. All right, so the tension uh, as a force, I think I got 13.4 newtons. All right, so there it is. That's kind of a slightly more complicated uh, problem, but it's always the same steps. All right, this one's kind of similar to the other one, except now I have the small block over here on the sloped region, and the angle's slightly different. I'm going to use the same masses, same old tricks. We're going to go a little bit faster now since we should be getting the hang of the way things work. So let's go ahead and draw all the forces acting on it. 
normal and the weight, those are pretty straightforward. Let's not forget the weight acting on this little block, mg. Uh, what else? Uh, there is a rope in the problem, therefore there should be a tension. There's a tension acting up over here. And there's a tension acting up over here. All right, now there's a normal force. Oh, you might say, hey, Ninja, did you forget the normal force? No, I didn't. Come on. I'm an expert. All right, there you have it, folks. That's it. These are all the forces acting on it. Now, what we're going to do is, what if you were going to guess which direction the acceleration would be in? Again, we're guessing now in the limit that there is no friction over here. If there's friction, I guess it could be a little bit more complicated. But if there's only one force here acting on the big block and it's the tension is acting to the right, there's only one force in that direction. So guess what? The block will accelerate that way. Newton's second law ensures that. And again, if the big block is accelerating that way, I'm also going to guess that this little block is going to accelerate down the ramp. So that's going to be the positive direction for each block. Now, I'm not going to worry about the direction perpendicular to the slope here or the direction perpendicular to this one. Um, now, one thing I did make a mistake is these normal forces are not necessarily the same. So I should actually differentiate them by using, say, a subscript over here. All right, so let's just focus on the acceleration. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down Newton's second law for the big block and for the little block. And before I do the little block, what I want to do now is I always want to break the forces down into components. So this weight has a component that is perpendicular. And this is mg cos of the angle of the ramp. And the component that is parallel to the ramp, the one that makes it accelerate downward, this here is going to be mg sine of the angle theta. All right, so let's go ahead now and add up all the forces on each block. For the big block, it's easy, right? There's only one. It's T. That has to be equal to mass times acceleration of that block. For the little block, M, there's two forces acting along the direction of the slope. There's this component of the weight. Again, I'm calling that positive since I'm assuming it's going to accelerate down the slope. Mg sine theta minus the tension that there has to be equal to mass times acceleration. That's Newton's second law. Now, guess what we're going to do? Hey, look at that. We have positive T on one. You have negative T on the other. If I call this equation one and equation two, if I add up both equations, the tension will cancel out. And what you're going to be left with here is mg sine theta. And that's it. And on the right-hand side, again, you get the total mass multiplied by the acceleration. So my expression for acceleration now is mg sine theta divided by the total mass of the system. So little m, again, we're going to assume it's 1 kilogram right over here. Big mass is 10 kilograms. So what you end up getting here is 1 multiplied by 9.8. Sine of 45 degrees in this time, in this case, and again divided by 11. Uh, the acceleration that I obtained um, was pretty small in this case, since you have a one uh, for the mass, it was uh, 0.62 uh, meters per second squared. If we're looking to solve for the tension, clearly the easiest way to do that now is just substitute that number right in here in our equation one. So we have the tension, which is simply 10, the mass of the big block multiplied by the acceleration, 0 0.62, which gives me 6.2 newtons for that tension force. Okay, pretty straightforward. I think now we get the hang of these problems. Let's look at something a little bit different. All right, this problem is a little bit different. Sometimes you see pulleys in this arrangement over here where you have a single string that wraps around one pulley and then you could have a second pulley. In this case here, the second pulley here, there's a block M that is suspended from it. Now, again, you have to remember that these pulleys were neglecting the mass of the pulley. So what we're going to assume here is if we're doing that, uh, I think the trick to all of these problems is what I'm going to do is I'm going to place everything in a box. I'm going to draw a little kind of dashed line here. And again, the pulley doesn't have a mass. So that means that the mass of everything inside this dashed box is simply the mass M. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider all the forces here acting on this box. All right. So what we're going to do here is we have three kilograms in this case that's suspended. 
and I'm going to pull on it. So you have somebody over here that's going to basically pull on this rope with a force F. And that force F that I'm going to pull is basically the tension force. Right? Whatever force you pull on it, again, since we neglect the mass of the rope and the mass of the pulleys, it's going to be the same force that is throughout this entire string or this entire rope. So if you're trying to do now a free body diagram on the block M, I'd suggest combining it with the pulley. And then you look at all the forces acting on that system. So we have the weight acting down. And now you look at what's sticking out of this box. In this case, look at, there's a string on the left hand side. So that means there has to be a tension or a force F acting on that side. And there's also going to be a force F or a tension force acting on the right side. So you see that although you're only pulling on one, you're only producing one tension over here, one force F. The reason you use this kind of system is because if I pull on it with 100 newtons, I actually get 200 newtons on the other side because there's two times 100 newtons sticking out. So let's look at the first problem. The first problem is what if I wanted to lower this with a constant speed of two meters per second? Well, the key word here is constant speed. So that means that the acceleration of this problem would have to be zero. So if I look at the total force acting on the block M, that has to be equal to zero. So that means that the weight minus all the forces acting up, in this case, it's two times the force F or two times the tension. Those have to be equal to zero. Those cancel out. And they're asking me what force F, what tension is required to accomplish this? Now you simply have to solve this expression for the force F. So bring this on the other side and divide by two. You're going to equal to half of the weight. So let's actually get a number. So we have our mass, which is three kilograms. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 and divided by two. And the force F, the magnitude of it, should give me about 14.7 newtons. Okay. So actually, I only have to apply a force of 14.7 even though the weight is way bigger than that, right? The weight is actually twice this force. So be a little bit careful with this, okay? All right, what about problem B? Problem B says, what if I now want to accelerate it upward and I want to accelerate it with an acceleration of five meters per second squared? Well, in this case now, there has to be an acceleration. So let me go ahead and add that to the free body diagram. I'm going to call up to be positive because that's the direction of the acceleration. So that means that the net force acting up has to be bigger than the weight. So if you write down Newton's second law now, it should look like this. We have 2F acting up, right? 1 plus 1. And minus the weight. Now instead of, it, it's, instead of the forces being equal to 0, they should be equal to the mass times the acceleration. And we want the acceleration now to be 5. So we want to figure out which force is required. All we want to do now is solve for F. So let's bring the weight on the other side. So we get 2F equals to MA plus MG. You can factor out the M here. So you're going to get A plus G. And at the end, if we're simply looking for the force F, what you want to do is simply divide by 2, right? So my expression for the force F, if I want to accelerate upward, is going to be m divided by 2 and a plus little g. Now we can substitute everything. We know the mass is 3 kilograms. We know the acceleration. We want it to be 5. And the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. Uh, at the end of the day, the magnitude of the force that I get uh, for this particular problem uh, should be equal to around 22.2 newtons. Notice that it certainly is bigger, right? It's bigger than the case where it's simply moving up or down at constant speed, right? In this case, there's a bigger force because I want to accelerate it upward. Okay, so be careful when you have multiple kind of ropes attached to a pulley like this. I would suggest just placing things in a box. And since the pulley doesn't have any mass, you simply look at all the forces acting on the box. All right, this is the last problem now. Let's go ahead and practice that that a little bit more. So here we're going to have a big mass. The mass now is going to be 300 kilograms and we're going to suspend it from this pulley system here, six pulleys. However, I can really only pull on one of the strings and it's going to be this one. And I'm going to pull down with a force F 
which means that the force F is basically the tension. All right, it's going to be the same tension throughout this entire rope. All right, let's go ahead and do a free body diagram. Again, since none of these pulleys have a mass, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of put everything into a little box. And I'm gonna look at all the forces acting on this little box. Well, there is a weight acting down. That weight is M times little g, where mass is 300 and little g is 9.8. I can calculate what the weight is. Now, although I'm pulling on the string over here with a force F, the reason you use a pulley system like this is because of this. You pull on it with F and what do you get? How many strings are actually sticking out of the bag? You get six. There's six tensions here acting up, one weight acting down. So in the first part, what we want to do is what happens if I want to lower this? It could be even raising, it doesn't matter. Or if I just even want to just hold it there, it's going to be the same problem. But the key is that it's constant speed. And that means for part A, again, the acceleration uh, has to be equal to zero. And that means that all the forces acting up have to be equal to all the forces acting down. So if we add up all the forces acting up, we write down Newton's second law for the box. What we're going to get here is six times the force F minus the weight has to be equal to zero. So in this case here, the force is equal to the weight divided by six. So you see actually to lift something really heavy, it's kind of an advantage to use a pulley system like this because you get six times the force. I pull on it with 100 newtons, I'm gonna get 600 newtons that's gonna help me raise something pretty heavy. So in this case here, the mass was 300 kilograms, little g's 9.8 and divided by six. Uh, at the end of the day, you substitute things in your calculator, you should get 490 newtons, right? It's much easier than if you were just gonna raise it directly with just one rope and one pulley. In that case, you'd have to apply a force equal to the weight of, the, of, of this object. All right, for part B, what we want to do now is, again, I want to accelerate it upward. So that's kind of important. So if it's going to accelerate upward, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose that direction to be the positive direction. When I write down Newton's second law now, it's going to look like this, 6F minus mg, those are still, I haven't changed any of the forces acting on the system. The only difference now is that these forces are not balanced. In this case, the 6F has to be bigger. And you, this is the net force acting on uh, everything in the blue box that has to be equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, so again, we wanna solve for the force F. So you do a little bit of algebra, you should get something like this. And again, now it's divided by six because there are six strings pointing up. Substituting all our values, we get 300 over six. Our acceleration that we want is five uh, plus 9.8. At the end of the day, the applied force that you would require to do this would be 740 newtons. Again, it's bigger because I want to accelerate it upward. So it makes sense that you have to pull harder on it. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned how to solve pulley problems. See you next time.